Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So, as you know, I've been doing a Windows 7 challenge. Uh, Windows 7. I love it. As you know, I've been doing a Windows 10 challenge, but I am considering going back to Windows 7 because I did like it. But no, seriously, Windows 10 is, is fine. And shortly I'm going to release a video talking more about Windows 10. But right now what I want to talk about is Linux in the news for Friday, March 3rd. And we have some really interesting stories to talk about. Now you may notice I'm in Windows and that of course is because I'm just wrapping up the seven day challenge in Windows 10 for myself. Although these videos will be edited in Linux, um, I have experimented with editing using Adobe Premiere Pro and I've released a video about that already. So hopefully you've seen that. And um, what I'm going to talk about now is some very interesting stories that have cropped up. Let's get started, shall we? So the first story that we're going to talk about comes from Razer itself. And they've been getting quite a few messages regarding Linux and the desire for having a Razer system that supports Linux natively. And what they've done is created a forum called the Linux Corner where Linux users can go and discuss their experience, provide feedback, and talk about anything related to running Tux OS on Razorblade, so Linux OS. And I am curious if they're going to increase their support of Linux on their Razor systems and what we're going to see in the future. So if you have something interesting you want to say and you're an owner of a Razor, I do recommend heading over to the Linux corner and putting in your two cents. Let them know what doesn't work, what does work, and what enhancements you would like to see as a Linux user. All right, next in the list. So according to ZDNet, yes, Windows wins the desktop, no surprise there, but according to ZDNet, Linux actually takes the world. And looking at Linux and where it's gotten in the past few years according to Steve Ranger over at ZDNet and I do have to agree um, Linux desktop projects are still there even though uh, Munich Germany of course is wanting to change back to Windows and it was one of the largest cities to completely change over to Linux in the recent past Linux really isn't all about the PC anymore there's actually way more um, saturation with Linux not just in the server environment but in the IOT market um, embedded systems really if you think about it Linux does rule the world so anywhere that it's a cost savings and and really it is on the desktop too but when you buy a PC uh, you don't really think about the cost of the OS and it's so um, built into the price you really don't look at it and say well I don't want to buy the system because the operating system costs X amount of dollars and I think even if we did know most users are going to opt for that Windows 10 OS that's already built in it's only a select few that are going out there and installing Linux on their Windows systems so the fact is though Linux does have control of the world market and it makes sense to me because really you want something that is very customizable user friendliness isn't really an issue like it is on the desktop so although some of the commands are really archaic and most users complain about that um, well maybe developers complain administrators not too much though you don't really hear a whole lot of, from administrators or developers they get to know Linux and they're able to make it into what they want also Linux is definitely entrenched in the smartphone market. I don't remember the exact percentage. The vast majority of phones are running Android, which really is a piece of Linux and is running the Linux kernel. So not just that, but other IoT devices as well, TVs, um, Blu-ray players, cameras, routers, all this different equipment that we use all the time is running Linux. and it really is a world dominant operating system even if you don't realize it and you don't necessarily see it every day 
And next in the news, pretty exciting. Looking at Linux kernel 4.10, there's going to be some significant changes. Just a couple I do want to go over here, but if you do check out kernelnewbies.org, Linux underscore 4.10, you can look at all of the updates that are coming out. Now, many distros, you will not see Linux kernel 4.10 for some time. So if you're running CentOS or Red Hat, you are not going to see these updates for a while. Now, Red Hat might choose to add support for some of these updates, but overall if you want the latest and the greatest you're going to have to be on a distribution that is much more cutting edge in my case I use Fedora and they usually tend to stay right up on the cutting edge with the latest kernel releases which can both be good and bad sometimes I do freeze my kernel because if I get something working just perfectly like VMware on Linux you know, a kernel update can sometimes break it for a while until a fix is released for that particular new kernel. So it all depends. Your mileage may vary. Some of the big ones that are really exciting is virtual GPU support. This to me is going to be really nice. So basically what we're looking at is virtual machines having access and performance that is as close to native as we can get at this point. So it'll be a completely virtualized GPU and that virtual machine will be able to make use of the GPU. I'm looking forward to doing some testing. I'm not sure yet which applications will take advantage of that kernel, whether it would be VirtualBox, which is one that I use pretty much the majority of the time in Linux. So we'll have to keep an eye out on VirtualBox and see if it does make uh, changes in response to this kernel version. I suspect they will though. They're usually pretty much on par with updates. So I do get regular updates. Another item that I thought was really interesting is improved write back management. Looking at this, I actually have experienced this firsthand. So what the write back management changes are going to do is make it easier for us to access different elements in the operating system while doing a major file transfer in the background and it's interesting what they say here since the dawn of time the the Linux synchronization to disks and data written has sucked and I have to agree so basically if you were doing a transfer of a bunch of files with USB and you decided to go launch another app it might not launch or it might just basically freeze and take some time before it actually launches that application. Now in Fedora 25 I didn't see an actual freeze where the app didn't launch until the transfer was done. I've actually had good success getting things to launch. It just might be a little bit slower than what you would expect in Windows. So uh, we're looking at improvements with that write back management. So looking forward to that. And another function is the hybrid block pulling that should make things much better. One of the problems with pulling of devices is yes it's good to pull the device to find out what the status is but we were having a problem where a continuous device pull would actually create uh, excessive CPU consumption and you could see that in the log where you were getting a considerable amount of pulling like over and over and over again on a device especially those that weren't responding and in this release they're supposed to have a pulling hybrid that is much more adaptive so instead of pulling over and over and over the kernel actually will introduce an artificial delay and then pull after that so they give an example here if the IO is assumed to be complete after eight microseconds so the kernel will sleep for four microseconds and then wake up and do the polling so it's not constantly polling the device to see if it's completed its work so these are some really nice changes there's many more you may want to read through uh, if you're interested next in the news Debian is finally bringing back Thunderbird for those of you who are using Debian you know that for some time Debian has been using the ice weasel web browser instead of the actual Firefox so 
they took the Firefox source code and made a fork and rebranded Firefox as Ice Weasel. And apparently there was some type of issue regarding trademarks with the Firefox logo. So I don't know exactly what happened there, but for the last 10 or so years, Debian has had their own rebranded browser and that also included Mozilla Thunderbird. So now, of course, Firefox early in March 2016 came back to the Debian distro and now Mozilla Thunderbird will be there as well. And some of you may be using the uh, Ice Dove email news and calendar client and there is a way according to this article to actually do a migration of your Ice Dove profiles to Thunderbird. So not really sure how long uh, Ice Dove is going to be supported. So you're probably going to want to look into that. According to this article in Softpedia, it's not very difficult because with the exception of the logos, Ice Dove is basically identical to Thunderbird. It just might be where in particular it's stored. Check out this article if you need to do a migration from Ice Dove to Mozilla Thunderbird. And last, interesting article, a little bit older, but our good friend Linus Torvalds basically is saying that talk of tech innovation is bullshit and he thinks we should shut up and get the work done now that's pretty harsh but he does mention in here some very good points he says you know when we go out in these forums and conferences and seminars and we talk about how great this innovation is and that innovation is the issue here is that it's 99% persistence and hard work and sweat and 1% true innovation. And after all those innovations, just like we saw and looked at with the Linux 4.10 kernel, there are still many more things that need to be done to really make open source truly innovative and truly great. Now, I do like his attitude. I'm not sure about, you know, the way he comes about it, but don't rest on your laurels and just think that those innovations that have been created are good enough and you can slow down or you still don't have work to do. And now I'm not a developer, so I'm not going to pick on developers because I truly appreciate the work that they do for open source and the Linux kernel and applications and operating systems in general, the Linux based operating systems. So I really don't complain much if I find a bug or an issue that's affecting me. I do my research and see if I can find a workaround and report when possible any bugs or issues that affect me in the hope that it can be fixed in the future. That's how I can contribute to the open source community. And hopefully you do too if you're using open source. If you encounter a bug, you know, of course, check and see if it's been submitted first. Many times it has, in which case, see if the bug is still open and then you can contribute your feedback into that bug without opening a new one. It's, it's a little bit easier for the developers to not have to chase multiple threads and be able to work on one bug and get it successfully taken care of. Put in your two cents where you can if you're not a developer. If you are a developer, thank you very much for the work you've done if you're working in open source because I appreciate it. I think for, for me as a user, I certainly have a lot more respect. And I know many get paid, I understand that, but when I think about Windows or Mac OS, I have a much higher expectation that if there is a bug discovered or an issue, that some kind of workaround or a fix would be forthcoming very quickly because it's a product that we paid for. If you get something for free, with quotation marks around it. Yes, there still is an expectation that these things should be fixed, especially when something lingers for many, many years. But I'm a realist too. I understand that what I got was something for nearly nothing and it works very well for me. So that is Linux in the news for Friday, March 3rd. Hopefully you have caught my other videos on the Windows 10 seven day challenge and if so, give me a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't, give me a dislike, drop me a comment. I always enjoy hearing from you. And I will see you on the next video with Fast Gadgets.